the roof build didn't go quite as smoothly as I was hoping. You're going to see in this video why I have titled this the worst day of this build so far. And let me tell you, to put it into perspective, if this had been the first day of the build, I'm not sure there would have been a second or a third day of the build. You might notice there's some windows and we haven't done a video on windows. Everything's a bit out of order, but I'll show you that in the next one. But before we get to that, we've got a few preparations that needed to do into the building before I could put the roof on. So let's whiz through those first. I've gone for the 11 mil quarter inch sheets and I'm keeping them in full sheets to do what I can, overlapping them so that the joints aren't all right next to each other and leaving a mil to two mil for wood movement. That's all simple. However, I've got to get those up there and I don't think there's any other way apart from maximum effort. So if you're doing this at home, if this doesn't work, get someone to help you. Believe it or not, I was as surprised as you that it went up quite so easily. Anyway, I only got three up on the first attempt because I thought, well, I'd start fixing them down just to see how it was and to get a bit of a feel for it as this is my very first time. And one thing to note as you're about to see, OSB is really slippy. So if you're gonna slide stuff across it and move stuff around, just, yeah, be a little bit careful. On a more serious note, it was actually more when I was sliding one OSB sheet across another rather than the fact I had to pick up about 300 screws before I could actually start fixing these down. So yeah, when you slide one board across another, that's where you've got a risk of it falling off the roof. Anyway, I got the first one leveled up with the corner and made sure that that was flush on all edges and then I just worked my way out. What you're seeing here is just 40 or 50 mil screws and they're done every six to eight inches. And where I had to cut the boards, I decided to do it on the roof rather than take them back down to bring them back up. So I just set my circular saw to the depth of the 12 mil ply and either free handed it or used this handy straight edge guide which anybody can make and just used it to trim off all the boards as I went. Now, since doing the OSB sheeting on the walls, I've been told that you don't need to leave the gap between because wood movement is negligible. I saw it in a couple of videos, so I did it. It's up to you. And the only thing that I did make sure is that every board meets another one on top of either a noggin or more importantly one of the rafters. And that's it. Once it's all sheeted, you can walk on it. I found the guide came in particularly handy when trimming off the lengths of these boards right at the edge. Rather than trying to get them perfect, it just made much more sense to trim them off as I went and just leave a nice straight edge along the side of the roof. Now, as you notice, none of that caused this to be the worst part of the build, not one little bit of it. And in truth, it wasn't. Sheeting the roof was fine. And even this bit, cutting the windows out so that I could put the wrap around the building. Again, that was really easy. It's just a reciprocating saw and then, oh, what a man. And then tidying it up with a router. It was a really, really easy job, messy, need a mask and you need earplugs because it's noisy, but it is super simple and did not cause me the grief that I told you about at the start. But that will be coming up soon. I'm not sure that sanding was all that necessary, but I just didn't want to leave any sharp scuff edges that could maybe pierce the wrap. And as I say a lot of times, it's my first time, so belt and braces. Right, so we've got the windows cut out and we needed to do that before we put the wrap around the building. So the next thing we had to do was take the door out and then we're gonna use this breathable membrane to clad the building. This is purely because the building needs to breathe but it also needs to be watertight. So water can't get in, but the air and the moisture can get out so the building won't get damp and it sits just behind the shiplap with a gap for the battens. The best thing about this bit is once this is done, the building is waterproof and so long as you don't leave openings like doors and windows, then you can leave it and take a bit more time over what you're doing. This is a bit of a weird moment for me. I suddenly had the urge to clean and I don't know why I decided to remove all the dust thinking that 
if I wrapped the building, I'd never get in here again to be able to do it, but, well, I did, anyway. Right, as for the wrap, you can see here, for the first time in many of these videos, I've got actually got a helper with me who, well, refused to be on the video. So, anyway, one person pulls it tight, the other one just staples, and I don't think there's a rule for how many staples you need. Just hold it tight to the building, don't go mad with them. And then overlap, well, there's a line on there saying how far you overlap it to, so it is all really, really simple. And then, once it's wrapped the building, you just need to tape up the joints. You can buy the really expensive stuff, or you can buy this semi-expensive tuck tape. I think it did a wonderful job. I even tried originally to spare it by missing out the windows. That lasted for one window, and after that I just thought, no, wrap it. It's really good stuff, it sticks really well, and it just holds all of the wrap together, basically and it does a lovely job. I'll pop a link in the description along with everything else that I've used on this build, and so if you're looking at doing this, you'll know where to find it. Now, sorry to keep you in suspense yet again, but that, that was not why this was the worst day of the build. Right, so the weather's turned on us the last couple of days, so I need to start working on the roof as quick as I can. Getting it watertight is the main priority. First, we're gonna put fascias across all of the wooden fronts here. This is what I've got for the soffit. I thought that a nice granite color would look really nice and it's got grooves down it, which means if I put it that way, so the lines running along my rafters, they'll actually help the draft come up this wall and then through. So, it'll, so my two layers of insulation that sit inside that roof, that air gap in between will have an airflow through it constantly. So hopefully it will stave off moisture and mold. The reason the air is going to come up here is we're going to batten this wall before we clad it. So there's going to be a nice airflow that will go up, across and back down. Do not cut this with a circular saw. I've just tried and it splinters everywhere. I'm going to use a handsaw and I'm just going to get it all cut to 38 mil as I've shown you up there. And then once I've got that ready, I can start putting the fascias on. It's all really simple. I'll show you as I go. I never thought I'd actually use this marker pen that comes with one of the pencils I was testing out uh, a couple of months ago in a video. Now, it works perfectly for this, to be fair, on the plastic, and once I got used to the saw, that also does a great job. I just marked and cut as many as I thought I needed to go across, and, well, that's how I worked it out. Just measured between the tongue and the groove, and counted how many I'd need to go across the front of the roof. Once you've done that, just nail it to the front, and then wherever you can get to one of the joists at the back, just pin one nail in there as well. Remember, the fascia is going to hold the front bit in, and the back, actually, as long as you're close enough to the wall, that'll be held up by the cladding eventually as well. Once you get in a rhythm, this is a really quick and easy process, and I found that actually, it doesn't really need a lot of explaining, it doesn't need a lot of thought, you just keep going and slot each one into the next until you get to the end. And once you've got a few up there, you can see that's where the airflow goes through into the gaps. Nice and easy. We've got the soffits up underneath. We haven't done any of the work beneath because we're going to do the cladding after this. I think I've got it in the right stages, but time will tell. The next thing we need to do up here is to put the fascia on. Now, I've ordered this stuff, which is flat on the front, which goes flush on the face. And it's got this overhang, which covers the edge of the soffit like that so it neatens everything up. So when you're cutting your soffit, don't worry if you're making a bit of a mess or if you're a couple of mil here or there. As long as you're not proud, it's not a big issue. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but this is slightly overlapping on the top. So what we're gonna do is cut it all flush, and then we're not gonna start on the front. It's the first time for me doing this, same as many of the other jobs. And if I make a complete bodge of it, it's better that it's on the back or it's on the side away from vision. So if I need to cut a piece out, and move pieces together, I can do that. So if I put a hammer through it, for instance, missing a nail, I want it to be on that back, or if I cut it slightly shallow. There's special nails with rings on them so they don't come out. They come with the kit, and they've got, I'll put a link down in the description for all of these things so that you know where to find them. Now you notice when this goes up that the soffits down the side had not actually been put into place yet. I was waiting for some joints to turn up to attach them to the front ones. And for that reason, I just had to cut a small bit of soffit off and attach it to the overhang on the fascia just to ensure that I left a five mil gap. You could use a bit of ply, use whatever you want just to make your life a little bit easier here. Yeah, that might not be the best way of getting your camera down from the roof. Anyway, this is one of the areas that I did make a really big mistake, or uh, there's a better way anyway. Basically, you don't need to pre-cut it before putting it up there. Just put it up, 
nail it into place and then go around with a trim router and just trim off the top edge and make it flush with the roof. As for spacing, I just use my hammer to do the length between the two nails and then I just use the length of the nail up from the bottom to make sure they're all in line. Another tip that I didn't really think about when I was actually buying all of the fascias and the soffits, don't worry about what you do around the back and the unseen faces. If you need to use two or three pieces, that's absolutely fine. Just make sure that your two faces of the roof that are actually gonna be seen have a nice neat line down the middle if you have to use more than one piece. That way you can get the most value for money out of what you're buying and less wastage. Now, if you're gonna use the trim router route, which I highly recommend, best to do it on the roof. It's a much easier job than trying to move the ladder along. Just shuffle along. It is messy, which is why I attached it to my little shop vac. After that, it's just a really easy process. And now we are a few seconds away from the start of the worst day of this build. I don't mind admitting this is the bit I've been dreading the most. We need to put the rubber roof on. Sunny day today, it's gonna to be super hot. The next seven days, there's possibilities of rain. So I think it's now or never with the roof. I've got the kit. I'll put a link to where I got it from. It's one single sheet of rubber that I'm gonna go, that I'm, that it's gonna go over the whole roof and it's up there. Word of warning, if you guys follow this route and I think it's probably one of the simplest ways of doing it, but it's the pricier way. Because the rubber is a single piece, it weighs an absolute ton. So have someone help you get it up the ladder. What you get with it, I'll show you in the kit. The idea is that I'm gonna go up onto the roof, I'm gonna give it a really quick sand, any of the sharp edges, things like that. I'm gonna give it a really thorough sweep, get all the dust off it, get everything, that all the, all the debris off it, and make sure that there's no sharp points sticking out. After that, I've gotta lay the roof out and I've gotta leave it to sit for a couple of hours just to get the creases out. Once that's done, we can get to gluing it down and I'll show you as we go. But let's look at the kit first. You get your glue to adhere it to the actual OSB sheets. Then this is bonding adhesive that goes around the edges to make sure that it is locked down and won't pull back. You get a brush for this. Now, I did have to buy an extra accessories kit to make sure I had everything that I needed. Nice pair of scissors, it's not cheap. I'm, and I'm not saying you should, but you could probably pick these pieces up or you might have them in your workshop anyway. I just, I, I've packed everything away, so I didn't want to be looking for it. Little rollers are for the bonding adhesive, big rollers are for doing the roof. Now, I did see somewhere that somebody suggested getting a long pole for that big roller. I'm gonna regret that later, but I'm not going to do it. Edge caps to go on the uh, corners, the top corners. And then all of this is edge trim. We'll get three sides that have a raised lip on it, which is this stuff. Now that sits on top of the rubber and makes sure that no water goes over them. Then at the back of the downward slope, if you like, that's where you have the gutter. Now, the gutter comes in two pieces, one of which goes under the rubber, one of which goes over the rubber. And any time you are joining this together, put a little gap um, because of the expansion. And that is all you really need to know, as far as I can tell. You get a bag of nails and screws, and also for every joint, they give you a plastic cap for wherever you're joining two pieces along the one side. And that's it. Let's get cracking. Now, one thing that really annoyed me when I was doing the edit for this video is actually, I don't think it shows quite what a mess I made of this and how close I was to completely stitching it up. At the end of the day, it was in the high 20s temperature wise. I'd got everything flushed, I'd sanded everything down, I did everything how I was supposed to do it and I laid the roof out exactly as you're seeing now. It's brilliant, the whole kit is absolutely phenomenal. I can't speak highly enough of Rubber for Roos for this. None of it's provided, none of it's sponsored. I bought it and actually it's a really good bit of kit. They've got it powdered so you can move it around, fold up some of the edges so you can pull it tight so it's a little bit better fitting and then you just leave it to sit. And like I say, none of what you're gonna see will really truly do justice to how stupid I was for doing this on a silly hot day. Oh yeah, and some of the stupid positions I take on my ladder. Now, this baton you see putting in here is just so that the overhang of the roof is a little bit longer so that it will go into the gutter. And the gutter strip is the first one that you put on before the rubber. Everything else goes over the top. So this little strip just goes on the back and then the rubber will sit over it. Another silly ladder technique and after that it will drip nicely into the gutter itself. So, the day's heating up. We're on about nine o'clock in the morning and I start rollering. Now this glue, it looks like PVA, but in fact it's got a rubber consistency and it bonds with the roof. 
But if you look at the left-hand side where I've already applied the glue, it's already started to go off. The heat was meaning that the dry time on this is ridiculous. So the glue was going off before I could even get to the end of the strip that I was gluing, hence the dad run that I'm doing on the roof, and you'll see that in every single bit. I wanted to take an hour, maybe an hour and a half to do this, and I had to do it in less than half an hour. And the glue was turning to rubber so quickly, I had to go back and even put a bit more on the bit that I'd done at the start. <sighs> It was just a little bit ridiculous. Anyway, once you've got the glue on it, once you've then put the rubber roof on top of that, you then brush out all of the air bubbles. So you need a decent broom up there and nothing that is too weak and is going to break. Otherwise that is gonna cause you major issues. So once you've then swept all the air bubbles out, glue again, and you apply the next bit of rubber on top of that and then you brush it again. All a really simple process. However, it's heating up and it's getting hotter. We're up to about mid twenties at this stage. And the broom that I was using was a cheap Amazon purchase. My fault entirely for not planning this. Anyway, I'm giving it quite a lot of stick to get all the air bubbles out. And sadly, it decided here to bend and break. Now it's about as useless as a dustpan. And this, this may not in itself feel like too big a problem, but if you imagine that I'm rushing, I'm on my hands and knees on a baking hot roof, and now I've got to bend over to do the one job that I could actually stand upright to do, it was just a kick in the teeth that I didn't need at that moment in time. Anyway, we got the first half of the roof up and down and brushed it all off, got rid of the powder coating and got the bubbles out. Brushed the middle bit as well, because obviously the other side's not stuck, and then I decided to power right through because Here's the point, I paid for an accessories kit. I only got one roller for the glue and one roller for the contact adhesive. So I couldn't let that roller dry up and it was going off. So I had to just power through with the second half of the roof, which I did, and exactly the same way. The technique I was using, I think, is about as good as you can do for this. And it, in perfect weather, it would work absolutely brilliantly. So I kept going, folding over, rolling it over, getting it onto the glue, rinse and repeat until the very worst case scenario happened with probably two runs of glue left to do. I'll let you watch. Oh, you. Oh, you. Oh, you. Glue tray tipped over. First step, my fault, but it's quite a flimsy tray. It folded up under me with too much glue in it. So now I'm smearing glue over the roof that's too thick. And yes, that crack is the handle falling off my roller. So from here on out, the rolling has to be done with me clutching on to this roller and desperately trying to smear the rest of the glue before it goes off over this roof. It's all right, just, I'm just gonna keep going and hope for the best. Oh. That was my wife offering to help and me well, deciding to smear the glue with my fingertips for the rest of this job. Um, the bits that I'm a little bit sad about not being able to show you that I missed out are me burning my knees on the black rubber, me gluing one of my knees to the roof when I leant on a bit where I'd spilt the glue. None of that showed through. And all I will say, if you are going to do this at home, pick the right day. This was too hot, much too hot. And in all honesty, the way I was rushing, I was increasing the risk of me even falling off the roof and hurting myself. And it was just a really silly thing to do because even the contact adhesive went off and the roller disintegrated under it because it stuck to the roof. It all just led to a very stressful build day and the results, I was very lucky, came out as well as they did. We'll say that I actually um, contacted Rubber Roofs just to give them a little bit of feedback on what happened and they refunded the full accessories kit. I told them I can't fault the rest of it, but the accessories kit did let me down a little bit. So next job, put the last bits of the trim on. With absolutely no issues with this bit. There's a big thick foam lining to these and it stated that you need to squash it around 70%. I just leant on it and then nailed it and figured that would be enough to get the compression to stop the water coming through. Follow it all the way around and where you put the trim on, I haven't shown you this, but you just put a bit of super glue on, only stick it to one part of the two pieces you're joining and leave a gap similar to the one I've shown you there for any expansion on the plastic. 
and then corners I just folded them like you would any other roofing material and a couple of staples held them into place and then everything just gets covered by the trim pieces anyway so don't try for perfection on these bits just do the best you can and then once you've got all the trim pieces on all you need to do is trim off the excess rubber which I left to the very end I would suggest don't do it on a ladder do it from the top of the roof be very careful when you're leaning over and just run your knife gently along it a nice sharp Stanley knife and the rest will just fall fall away Okay, so after the complete debacle that was the rubber going down on the roof, which by the way has been rained on four or five days now and I've had no leaks, no problems. It's just waiting on the gutter. But after that, the last thing-ish that we've got to do, apart from the gutter, is the last bit of soffit. Now, you notice when I was doing the front that they run front to back, the grooves on it. Well, this, I want the grooves to follow all the way along right through to the back so that it looks really smart, basically. The way that you join it is there are these special joints that you can buy that hold the two together end to end or end to side. They are really stiff and this is going to be a little bit of a problematic fitting because it's a full length, it's about four meters that I've got to span and it's really bendy and the ends are exactly the same size as the bit they've got to go in. So it's a real pain to get them squished in and pushed in and front and back and get it underneath and get it underneath the fascia. When you're making your roof or putting whichever parts of the building, do it better than me because I am now retrofitting a lot of the bits of the insulation because my electrician said to me, don't put any insulation in, let me do the wires. And so I did, but there are a few tiny spaces like up in the, like up in the top of the rafters, certain areas on the overhangs that you just can't get to once the soffit's in. So bear that in mind if you're gonna go down this route. You know what, I think it's safe to say this is a two person job and not on a windy day, but I'm gonna keep trying. And what you're gonna watch is just me not having planned a job as well as I should have planned a job. Basically, get the joints in at the right time to fit these pieces together. Do the long side first so that all you've got to push onto the joint is the shorter section on the front of the building. So smart, just didn't think of it at the time. But as is the moral of the story with this entire build, if you've got two people, use them and you can never have enough clamps to help you along the way. Clamps came to the rescue in the end and I finally got the piece to go exactly where I wanted it to go. Couple of tacks, hold it into place and with that and the fascia at the front, it wasn't going anywhere. I really tried not to sound too negative during all of those mishaps that were happening, but I have to tell you, the roller braking nearly broke me. And smearing that horrible glue around with just the fluffy roller in my hand, covering myself for the last couple of runs was, was no fun. But it wouldn't be a true start making video if I didn't show you the mistakes. And as with all of them, we pushed through. It is now hammering down with rain. It has been for three or four weeks since that roof went up not a drip inside, dry as a bone, and I'm kind of glad I did it in that horrible heat because I don't know whether that is worse or better than doing it in the rain, but either one has got its own issues. What it does mean is that I can start doing some videos inside for you guys, and that makes me incredibly happy. So overall, yeah, it was a tough day, but we got through it. I hope you've really enjoyed the build, and I hope it showed you that these things happen and we've just got to push through them, if, like me, when you watch these videos, you want more information on the costings and where I got the rubber roof from, for instance, what I think of the company, a full review of everything that I've done and who I've used, I'm absolutely going to do that at the end of this build series. So hang tight for that. I promise you it's coming. As for now, if the next video's up, as usual, it'll be there. If not, I'll pop something up there that I think you'll like. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you over there.